Let's uh, turn our attention to rugby because uh, the World Cup is basically uh, kicking off, give or take, a couple of months tomorrow with uh, Ireland's interest in the warm-up games uh, starting against Italy and uh, delighted to say James Tracy is on the line. Morning, James. Morning, James. How are you getting on? on? Yeah, not too bad, not too bad. Um, as you were saying there, pumped uh, finally finally here. Uh, I feel like we've been chatting about it for ages, so yeah, excited to to get to get our teeth stuck into it. And for a pile of players in the team, like it does feel like uh, here's your chance. Yeah, and, and uh, looking by the team that was selected, uh, that's definitely the way they've gone. They've gone with uh, like some interest in parents, but obviously trying to build a lot of continuity. Uh, I think like. Probably the most interesting one uh, would be maybe Darius at seven. Um, like I look at the squad when it first came out, and you're 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 seeing like probably don't have an out and out seven after uh, Van der Fleer. Oh man, he's probably the obvious choice um, to go in there as as kind of like cover uh, if if Van der Fleer was to get injured, and then um, you're looking kind of. Who's next, and, and maybe Doris is, is probably the next in line to uh, to fill that jersey if need be. So good for him to get miles uh, miles in the clock in the jersey and uh, interesting back row on paper. Like you you look at Baird, he's kind of like a Tom Croft uh, of all type type uh, six, um, and then Conan, you know, is like a you know, test Lions test number eight and, and I feel like only for Doris having uh, the, the season of his life he, he would have uh, been unbelievably prominent last year so he, he's getting a good run um, to, to put his hand up uh, at the start of it but yeah I don't know what, what are your thoughts lads are you, are you excited the the back row is full of class yeah yeah there is a bit of that uh, albeit like I'm not sure is what Andy Farrell is thinking obviously for the games that run after this is this sort of last chance saloon and then after this we get a bit serious about the teams that we're starting to pick or what do you think how do you th- how do you see playing out from those games after this uh, I would say last chance saloon but I'd say it's more rewarding lads for, for what they've done in training you know uh, like Joe McCarthy getting his first start I think he burst onto the scene uh, was you know and, and he's kind of hasn't really looked back from that, that point of view I think he, he probably um, is getting an opportunity with, with an older head um, in Henderson beside him, which is always a, a great thing to do. Like you look at the at the bench, they've done that with uh, with Healy um, and Furlong uh, with, with Tom Stewart, and it's, it's just such a a settler for a young fella playing the biggest game of their life, having two old heads have been there a million times, um, and it'll give them the best opportunity to to put their hands up and be a bolter. Uh, to make their way into that starting 23 because I feel like from what we've seen uh, over the last two years it'll be hard to break into that starting 15 especially uh, unless you have an unbelievable next few games From the outside looking in right it's really hard to get a handle on how those conversations go during the week on this topic because we tend to use it as a bit of a cliche I've just used one there is it last chance saloon right but like actually internally I wanted to get a bit of a fix on how that plays out and so I was looking at your Ireland caps last night and I think I'm right to say the one start was against Japan in 2017 in a game that like there was a lot of people uh, Marmion John Ryan Treadwell funny enough uh, one of them that got a shot um, under Josh Smith was it like explicit is, how explicit are those conversations in that week leading up to the game in terms of the opportunity that's it it's it just put on a especially from my experience anyway it was put on the plate just been like you know you've you've gotten yourself to this point um, and, and here you go now take your opportunity make sure you you do the best which you can with your time in the jersey and, and that's what you want uh, I'm excited this week uh, especially to see um, the partnership Casey and, and Crowley uh, I feel like Casey was on, like he, he had a very 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 strong game the last time I played Italy in the Six Nations uh, he was he was obviously with Byrne that day. I feel like building partnerships with uh, with players who are in your own provinces is, is 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 invaluable because you just get so many more minutes with each other, so many more reps, whether it be in training, whether it be week to week. That you have you go through the bad days together, you go through the good days together, and you just grow as a unit. I think keeping them together is. Um, it's, it's a good idea for Munster it's a good idea for Ireland long term but excited to see how they go because they're going to, both going to want to be pushing for uh, to be you know pushing for the maybe the 23 and, and uh, looks like maybe they've you know 
kept Murray and uh, and Bird together. But you know, again, I'm hypothesizing there. But yeah. um, for the for these two lads, the the more they build that relationship, they'll come as a package. Then you know, and 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 that can only be a good thing for our Irish rugby. What if Crowley, that, what what if Crowley, just just, yeah. just just one on on on? I just want to follow up on the point that you made about the 2017 game. Was that a conversation with Joe James? Uh. <laughs> It depends, right? So, you know, he wouldn't necessarily have an individual conversation with every player, but like throughout, that was a tour. So throughout the tour, you have plenty of opportunities to sit down, you know, whether you're you're in the video room, whether you're whatever. Mm -hmm. It was kind of like, you're going to get an opportunity at some point, you know, make sure you take it. It was kind of the conversation I'd had. It wasn't specifically what game. We hadn't played any games at this point. Um, So it was train well and uh, you'll get an opportunity make sure you take it when you do. So so it doesn't need saying at the time. And then afterwards, how did you go in the game and what happens afterwards in terms of like, obviously you're analysing the hell out of it in your head, I'm sure afterwards as to what sort of an impression you've made. Uh, Yeah, it didn't go amazingly well. It wasn't a a complete sinker, but it wasn't amazingly well. Uh, But yeah, you're you're going to be like overthinking it massively you know, especially if it doesn't go well. So, um, yeah, I, I just remember, you know, there was a million things I wish I could have done better and all that different things. And I probably, a lot of players would have that, that self-talk after games, even if you would be perceived when you watch the video back, you're like, I actually didn't have as bad a game as I thought I had. But, uh, yeah, it's always that battle with your own self-talk. Of you, you always concentrate on the things you could have done better versus look at the bigger picture when you watch it back and you're like, okay, actually was happy enough with uh, a lot of things I did well there and I can fix up those little things. But for these lads going in, it's going to be, uh, they, they love what, they, you know, they've gone through two blocks of like really, really tough preseason training. It, they, they know they're going to be blown. So it's just getting the kind of cobwebs uh, blown off, making sure that they're nailing down on, on the stuff that they said they're going to do. You know, we all... Uh, sit down you know each team I'm sure at the start of uh, each block and you're like everyone wants to win the World Cup okay how are we going to get there talk about all the things all the boxes we're going to tick what we're going to do on the pitch what we're going to do for each other um, so it's actually not making that be lip service and backing it up on the pitch um, with your actions I think that that's one thing as like non-professional sports players that we, we never think about enough the terrible beauty of being able to watch yourself back and like watch a game like from and and and, and almost probably thinking how did that go and watching it back and then revising your opinion or seeing something that like Jesus I, I screwed up there like and it's like it's a, it's a, it's a beautiful thing to have but it can be um, I guess it can be like strange watching yourself back as well but on another point what's he looking for here from Crowley like in terms of if he's envisioning in his head the World Cup and he's like we're going to get situations at out half where you know, we we may need our second or third choice out have. So what what's he looking for here in the sense of I know you're you're obviously going to expect to beat Italy, but what's what the, the Crowley situation for me is fascinating where he, where he's emerged in this situation now. So what I'm looking for out of him anyway is to control the game. So Ireland uh, have a very um, structured uh, attack and plan, um, and. You know, he needs to fit in really well in that. You feel like, you know, when we're at our best, playing on top of teams, and it just looks easy. And I, I think watching him play at the tail end of of, uh, of Munster's season, that's the Crowley we want to see playing, is just comfortable playing, you know, whether with the right thing in place, whether it's a crossfield kick when the defence is closing, whether it's playing the right pass. So just being comfortable, bossing the team, um, kicking his goals. Like, uh, and, you know, it's make it like too simplified in it but just being the best version of him from what we've seen already at the end of, of Monster season and, what, and the glimpses we've seen of him in a green jersey that's what we want to see you don't want to see he doesn't need to be man of the match he just needs to be really really good in his uh, core roles and I feel like making everyone else look look better and, and that's exactly what you want from him because Sexton's going to start if he's fit so it's who is going to be the the next in line, whatever happens, and uh, it's you know it's it's up for grabs. You know at the moment I I have Burn in in at number two, but who's who's we've got a few games here for for him to, to change my mind uh, on that, and uh, I'm, I'm sure it's you know because it's so close, I'm sure it's pretty even split on on who 
most people think should be the number two but mm. uh, I think Burn edges him at the minute especially with like miles on the clock and stuff like that and just general how he fits into how they play but he's now at a whole pre-season in there with them he's going to have he's the first opportunity here he's playing with his pal who he's got more reps than anyone else with as at scrum half so he's got every opportunity and excited to see how he goes it's, it's an interesting one psychologically isn't it because you're trying to you're trying to at once like um, make a real case to yourself here but without being flashy at the same time yeah and that's that's the struggle really is uh like Joe Schmidt used to have a line before, or he used to we used to have a subs meeting before uh, international games, and his line to us was fit in first. So don't feel like you have to do something extraordinary just because you're in on a new stage. It's you're here for a reason. Keep doing the same thing that's got you here, and uh, I think that's probably. Um, something you know he'll have in the back of his mind. Just do my role. He's like he he it, stuff will come naturally to him anyway. You know he doesn't need to try and make stuff up. Uh, I feel like he's a he's a he's a quality player, so it'll come naturally to him. Fit in versus a good a good one. What was the when you saw the team yesterday? Give us your first thought when you saw Rob Herring at hooker. Um, yeah, no, I I I, I would have expected uh, to be honest for him to to be in there and then. Uh, I, I think the the ones where I was kind of surprised slash uh, very happy about to see was um, Stockdale and uh, and Earl's partnership back in the wing. I think they, like that's an exciting one that we haven't seen for a long time, um, and I'm hoping for for Stockdale especially that he can get his mojo back at international level. You know, he was unplayable for for a few seasons, and and uh, just that sport. You know, sometimes you you lose your momentum and hopefully he'll be able to get it back and hopefully get early, a few early scores or a few big moments in the game just to get to Stockdale that, that uh, you know that iconic uh, try against New Zealand the, ch- the chip and chase like those, those moments you know you want to get that, that guy back I've never asked a former hooker about a hooker before and he moves on immediately to talk about a winger. <laughs> <laughs> oh, listen, <laughs> Rob, Rob's, he's, uh, he, like, battled it out with him for, for years. You know, he, he's, uh, he's, he's going to be a leader at, um, in that group, definitely. Uh, I think for him, it's, it's more taking your opportunities when you can because the other two have just set the bar so high. Yeah. Um, it's not not an easy spot to be in where you know the fit in first probably doesn't doesn't uh, go for him as much where he probably does need to do things outside of his game to push the off thing. But I don't think he's going to do that. Like I would, if I was him, I wouldn't be chasing stuff that's not my remit. Like he's, you know, what you're going to get with him. He's going to be unbelievably accurate with his line out. He's going to be a leader around the pitch. He's great at scrum time, and um, he, he's a real nuts and bolts player where you know what you're going to get from him. I think yeah. like when Ireland have needed him over the last three years he's come up in spades with huge moments whether it be big tries big throws at the end of games um, can't say oh, I've been jealous of looking at him taking those big moments and, and he's been he's been exceptional so um, yeah there you go <laughs> can't say you have been jealous or can't say you haven't been jealous sorry <laughs> I can't say I haven't been jealous. I've definitely been jealous. I'm being honest there, but uh, you know you have to take your hat off every now and again because he's uh, he's continually stepped up when he's been asked for, especially in the range shirt. Just one last one for me. Uh, you touched on Sexton earlier on, and I was interested to hear Paul O'Connell's comments during the week about his uh, Sexton's obsessive approach to rugby, um, saying that he watches everything that moves, that he's you know back in talking about every game. Was that your experience on a Monday or Tuesday? He's back in talking about whatever games happened, and and O'Connell was um, framing that in the sense that like this will be fine. Like he's obsessive about this thing. He'll be full bore in training and. This will all be fine. He was ever trying to reassure a nation. <laughs> yeah. Well, I, I for one didn't need any reassurance ever uh, from from knowing him. But yeah, listen, he's like a, a Michael Jordan esque type uh, person, character, player, generational talent. I I have no worry in the world. And to answer your question, like obsessed is an understatement. Like he's what is he? He's thirty seven, thirty eight, still playing the game at the the highest level you kind of have to be obsessed to be able to have the drive to, to do that. So uh, that in itself says it, says it all, but I'm not one bit surprised. You know, that he, he's a, he's a captain of his country and I can't put into words 
how much it means to the man and to anyone it's a huge honor it's captain your country but he that was for him it was it was just it was the the ice and the cake to, to an amazing career but it wasn't just I'm okay I've done that you know I'm done like he wants to win the World Cup and I I, I I don't know if if uh, many of past captains have had the firepower and the team and the belief to actually believe they can do it. I know in my heart that he knows that they can do it. This this team can do it, and, and uh, that is the most motivating thing in the world. Never mind, he's already uh, an obsessed freak uh, mm. and a perfectionist, and and everything you need to be to be one of the best in the world. Probably a stupid question. Like, does he does he chat to Crowley about the? the experience of Saturday and what give him a little bit of advice John I would say if Crowley seeked it out he, he would 100% give it uh, maybe if he felt it was right he might give it but uh, I, I don't think Crowley would necessarily need it you know I, I feel like he's played in big games so um, it's more he would again I'm just guessing here but you, you kind of you go hard on each other in training and that's how you prepare. You know, he's going to have to train against Johnny in training and Johnny's going to be going 100%. So if you can deal with Johnny at 100% and the team that's coming against you, you'll be well prepped for, for the weekend. And that's more a way of, of preparing and passing on, uh, especially to someone who's in your position. Mm. Um, you know, like the, the, the best thing you can do for them uh, is is be hard on them and, and be hard on each other because that's only going to make everyone else better. So uh, sometimes words aren't necessary. Necessary sometimes they are, uh, but I, I could imagine Crowley would have would have just been uh, pushed to the limit in training from from everyone, especially from from the other eight halves and his experience with Monster and his, his, his little bit of experience with Ireland would have set him up well. But if he if he had any questions to ask Johnny, I can guarantee you that door would be open to to any knowledge you want to know. Yeah. All right. Well, it'll be the first of many chats. I'm sure we'll have over the coming weeks and months. James, thanks a million. Good man. I'll chat to you soon. Thanks a lot, James Tracy on the line there, former Leinster hooker. Some interesting stuff in relation to the team uh, to play Italy tomorrow, and uh, looking further ahead.